Worcester Cathedral occupies a beautiful spot on the River Severn. Work on this architectural masterpiece began in 1084, and it's remained a place of prayer ever since. But the peace is soon to be shattered, as today over 150 people and their pets descend. Canon John Paul Hoskins will be leading the service. John Paul, who have we got here? Well, you've got Rosie and I've got Wellington, and they're both elderly border terriers. Absolutely gorgeous. And, and the pet service, why is it important to you? Well, back up. It's such a, an important thing to uh, welcome the animals into the cathedral. And the church is about celebrating everything. You know, God wants to know everything about all our lives. And animals like these two, such an important part of that. They're such gorgeous dogs. I bet they help you with your work, don't they? I uh, bet they're good pastoral <laughs> ministers. They, they're great out and about, because people will happily talk to the dog if they won't talk to the vicar. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're really good. A service like this must take a little bit of organisation and planning. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it certainly does, with lots of people coming, and particularly when some of them have got four legs or wings. We've got to make sure we keep the, the large animals and the small animals uh, separately. And the, the vergers who look after the cathedral building are going to be on hand with uh, buckets and uh, shovels just in case animals do what they sometimes do. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. I've got a newfound sympathy for Noah. Oh, yeah. Very like Can you the, the, <laughs> the pet blessing service is now a firm fixture in the cathedral's calendar. But the original idea was sparked when Tracy Parbury of the local Greyhound Trust came for a cuppa in the cloisters. It was started in 2014. Um, my mum was disabled. So um, I came in through the cloisters with a wheelchair and I got my dog settled. And um, some of the, the team from Worcester Cathedral came along and basically said, we're really sorry, but we don't allow animals in the cathedral. And that's how the journey started. I, I wrote to the cathedral and said, how about we do a pet blessing service um, to allow all God's creatures into the cathedral for one day. And to my wonderful surprise, the cathedral um, contacted me and said yes. And it was such a success that, that I'm pleased to say the cathedral worked with us for several more and has continued to do the pet blessing service since. You must be very proud that the pet blessing service that you started is still going. How do you feel when you see it? I want all those animals walking. <laughs> Do you know the volunteers of the, of the Greyhound Trust started something that was so special and it meant so much to so many people? And so for me, yes, a very, very proud time. And I speak to people even now who come to the Pet Blessing Services or join the Pet Blessing Service in, in, the, in the past. And they said to me, you don't realise how important it is to remember our pets.